The content is for informational purposes only. We are not financial advisors or certified financial planners. Do not construe any such information or other material as any type of legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Do your own research, consult a professional financial advisor before making any financial decisions. We will not and cannot be held liable for any actions you take as a result of anything you view or read here. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Finance Fucks. Banks are in bed together, pro bono style. The latest Chinese spy balloon appears to be TikTok all along, and we discuss gold-covered stakes. Oh yeah. As you already know by now, the United States is considering a nationwide ban on TikTok. Thank God. About a time. nationwide, yeah. They've already implemented federal ban, right? Uh, federal of like government government employees. issued yeah. yeah government issued cell phones i was surprised that 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 hadn't occurred sooner i was really shocked when i found out that it was just then i'm like i, I would have hoped that would have been a long time ago yeah it had been in the works since 2020 i think to get rid of it from to get cell rid phones. of it from government cell phones yes i think the nationwide thing is more recent but in full support of that 100 percent I would be saddened and shocked to find any opposition to that. And if there are people, is I'll say not just I'm not gonna say regular people. I want to find out who uh, politically is against it, like who who in Congress or something like that. Someone that actually has like a, a say. Yeah, in the no, matter. It was bipartisan. Okay, in, I think so. As it should be on but, this issue, I think. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I would be interested in seeing seeing too. Um, and who was opposed to it? Yeah, and why, or try to, or speculate as to why. But nonetheless, I think a majority of people know why the nation is considering the ban. But I'm sure there's a handful of people out there that just don't. They just haven't found out why, or they just straight up don't care. That <laughs> good grief, which is by far worse, I think. And I think for the people that fall into that bucket of not not giving a hoot, I those same people, in my opinion, don't have a, a say on Chinese spy balloons going over the United States. I think they've been a walking Chinese sp- spy balloon this whole time. Oh, since they downloaded the app. Yeah. But they also probably don't care about the spy balloon, so it's very hard to... I'm sure there's people... No, I'm sure about. I'm sure some people that have TikTok are also complaining about the spy balloon. I'm sure there are. And I think... There gotta that, be some. Yeah. yeah. I think it's... I, I keep imagining someone on TikTok, like, scrolling and seeing, mm-hmm. like, Chinese spy balloons and, like, being really upset about it and, like, you know... Like, what the hell is it doing yeah, in yeah. our country? Get it out of here. Get yeah, it this out is here. ridiculous. It yeah. should have been banned. But then, God forbid, they banned TikTok, TikTok. nationwide on their phone. God <laughs> forbid, huh? But nonetheless, um, let's elaborate as to why the country wants to get rid of it. And I, I can start on that, and you can add some some talking points. But just an aerial view on the grand scheme of things, China and the United States don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. And it's safe to say that more or less, I hope it doesn't sound too harsh, but China wants to see the West fail. In this case, the West being the United States. They want to see a sink like SVB. Exactly. And no bailout this time, right? We get no bailout. Who's going to bail us out? Yeah, NATO. We're like, usually the bailout. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's true. We really are. Yeah. yeah. They're the ones like, we're back up. <laughs> yeah, just hit up Ukraine. They know. <laughs> or Af- Afghanistan. <laughs> um, so with that said... Knowing that the United States and China don't see eye to eye on a lot of things and that we're politically uh, opposed mm-hmm. on, on, on a great many things, it's not hard to believe or, or come to the realization that a Chinese company, in this case, a social media company that has access to a lot of information about us and all the things that we saw on our phone, can go back to CCP, to the CCP. Whatever it is they do with that information, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, it can't be good for the nation and its citizens. Absolutely a national security threat. Yeah. So I found out um, that TikTok is owned by a company called ByteDance. Mm -hmm. And it's headquartered in Beijing, China. Of all places. Exactly. And when I say owned, I don't mean like 100% solely owned. But I think they're a majority owner of the company. Yeah. That's, That's where the U.S. government... I mean, on paper has the problem with if they were to somehow get rid of that of ByteDance or get or force ByteDance to sell off their share of TikTok. Uh, I guess the U.S. would be a okay with it. I still personally believe in that even if ByteDance was to sell off their stake, 
how do you fully know with like 100% certainty that there is no more ties going back to China? And, well, let's not say China, the CCP. More accurately, the CCP. Exactly. You would have to do a full audit. There would be so much. I really don't know. I wouldn't. Right? I don't. Yeah. I don't even think I'd trust it for a very long time. I don't think. Well, at all. Like it's. Yeah. It's so easy to have back doors, to have like a mole somehow, knowing what's going on. There's just too much there, man. I don't it's it's ridiculous. The terms and service, like they they'd have to completely rewrite that for me to even give it a second thought. But. It doesn't even matter, man. Sometimes I look at these privacy policies, terms of service, whatever the case is, it's like, yeah, sure, it's like it's on paper, but how do you actually know that they're enforcing what they what they say they won't do or do? Yeah. Well, no, the crazy thing about TikTok is their terms of service are so egregious, but they literally laid out for you on yeah. that they basically control your phone <laughs> and all the information that gets input, output from it. Yeah, it's so much. It, I can't remember where I got the source from, but I remember hearing that even if like you have it on your phone, it can still extract information from like your Wi-Fi, your modem mm-hmm. router. And some and get some limited information from other devices yeah, that are tapped into the same network. Yeah. That's insane, man. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that the U.S. wants to ban is a good thing. I just don't know what's going to happen with all the advertisement and like all that. You know, whoever buys it is going to have to figure all that out. It's evaluated between... I think I read 40 and 50 billion. I don't know what company is going to want to buy it at that price right now, especially seems, given, I mean, given like the economic status we're in or whatever. We're not social media experts, but 40 to 50 billion sounds highly inflated. I don't believe that it, it would be worth that much. Not I experts mean, by any stretch of the means. Yeah. And then let's expand. I mean, I, we're not a, we're not a political show here, but um, before we talk about the finances of it or or the money related objectives of, of of TikTok and whatnot, I know the answer, but I think it'd be best if you try and explain why do you think the U.S. is going so hard. It's an obvious answer, but why is the uh, the United States going so hard after TikTok and not Meta in this case, Google or any other social media, Twitter, for example, conglomerate here in the United States? It just comes down to where the the owners are located. So Meta, Facebook, Google, YouTube, all that are technically American companies. Yes. So they, you know, they're not going to be going against our country's own interests. At least I hope, you know, they could. And it's also like a different country like China and the CCP, like as you were saying, have a vested interest in seeing us like literally collapse and these other companies, I don't, they don't have the no, same. No, they, they're they literally piggy banking off of the United States economy. Exactly. If we collapse, they're, they're going, going down exactly. with us. And, you know, if we collapse, China, that doesn't mean China's going down with us. So you'd be surprised. There are some ties, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the end all for them. Yeah, That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It boils down to like, we're not saying meta Google are saints either. Oh yeah. No. Um, but at in the grand scheme of things, it's more of a privacy concerns amongst what they're doing with our data in mm-hmm. regards to like selling it without our consent or how much do they know and what they're doing with it versus legitimate espionage of certain people and uh, efforts of, of, again, like you mentioned, like a, a, like the collapse of the United States or to further advance their, their propaganda, if you will. Yeah, it's a clear divide. I mean, to simplify it, Facebook, all those other companies just they want to figure out how they can sell your data to make the most money. Exactly. A business. It's like, yeah. Yeah. But let's go back to like the finance related aspects of things. You mentioned that TikTok currently has evaluation. I think when you mentioned it to me um, off the air, it was between, there was two like. There were two separate yeah. analysts or groups that did their valuations. One well, of them was up to a hundred billion. Dude, tripping. And yeah, that's. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And then the one that seemed more realistic to the both of us, I think, was between 40 and 50 billion. Okay. I mean, Twitter just sold for, what, 44 billion to, to Elon. Is that how much it was? Yeah. So I don't see, I see TikTok maybe being around. Around there. Yeah. I, I'm not saying it like more or less, but it, 100 billion seems like a, a lot of money, dude, for this kind of thing. Especially, 
even if like even, let's say you and I were presented with the offer, let's say we have the cash reserves for it, and it would it would suit us to own this uh this this media company. We they have no they no longer have any CCP ties. But again, going back to it, how do you really know? It's like yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to buy this, but you yourself don't know. Like you mentioned earlier, the moles or the back doors that there are, and if the U.S. does consider it, you know what? We're just going to get rid of it. Irrelevant of ownership. They can claim pretty much anything they want. I don't know. But let's a nationwide ban because we can. The American way. Yeah. And that's it. You just lost all your money. I mean, I could be, that's com- not I could be completely wrong, but we don't know who developed like a lot of the code, right? Who wrote it. You know, maybe it'd have to be a complete rewrite or reconstruction. And that's... That fifty billion or whatever, that's just straight up buying the the share or whatever the rights to to like to to say you own it or something to say you own it, yeah. And then you still have to pay for whatever. That's a lot of money, man. Like all the employees, you probably have to start fresh, man. Exactly. I'm not gonna get into like the logistics of what that means. Obviously, layoffs, but it rehire rehire in the re- U.S. Mm-hmm. Relocate the headquarters. You have to vet these people. Make sure they're maybe like a ba- a deep background security check. I think even though it's not like a, it's not a, you usually wouldn't do a deep background security check for these positions. I would assume, but I given the situation that we're in and given how much of a threat it is that it, it, yeah it is or it, if it was to sell off was would, yeah. or you would still I think it would it would warrant that kind of skeptical uh, exactly skepticism. Um, by the way, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. You mentioned, let's say, forty to fifty billion. Was that ByteDance's share alone, or the entire in the entire uh, TikTok valuation? No, I think that was just if you wanted to buy ByteDance's share or their portion of ownership oh. for the app. Yeah, we should have looked up how much percentage they own, but we didn't. <laughs> we didn't do it. But screw it, whatever. But that's still must be a significant amount. That, yeah, exactly. But that's insane. It's a lot. I thought it was. I was, I got me thinking. I'm like, is that the entire thing or just the bite dance? But if it's just bite dance, that's well, that's excess of a hundred billion possibly. <laughs> yeah, you could have saved third, you know, First Republic Bank three times, <laughs> or Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, there you go. Jesus, good grief. But um, yes. who do you think would be a good suitor to buy TikTok here in the U.S.? So I think we went over that Google and Meta can't buy it. Anti antitrust laws. Would, yeah, it would be very uh, gr- shady. Yeah, shady thing. I feel I feel bad for Google because I feel like anything that involves Google and its companies, or even like new, right, like new technology in a way, it always they always end up in Congress and like explaining to them like what they're legitimately <laughs> trying to do and whatnot. And I just I kind of feel I'm not gonna say like oh poor them, you know I'm you know I'm shedding a tear, but nonetheless they're always in the crosshairs of things, especially Meta, and I, I rightfully so, rightfully Met, so, <laughs> rightfully so with the privacy policy, you know. But again, they don't pose a national security risk. Yeah. But uh, who do you think would? I mean, I uh, I aside think, from them, yeah, I think the highest or the more most likely companies to purchase them at one point were Microsoft and Oracle. I don't know where they stand now. I don't know if they'll do it, but Microsoft was making a lot of acquisitions recently for like game developer studios and things like that. So I know they were really pushing their Xbox um, branch of their company. I don't know if they will go into the that social media aspect. As an investor in Microsoft, I think it would be a good move, but I don't know, maybe at the valuation, it might be high. I'd, I'd have to see how they would, you know, how they would, it, Evaluate it, but I think you even mentioned Walmart was considering Walmart. buying TikTok, right? You know what? Actually, I think it was Walmart in partnership with Microsoft. I don't know how that would work. I think they were thinking of going into it together somehow. I don't. I didn't really look into it or understand it exactly, but it was those two. I think partnering up or Oracle outright on their own doing it. Interesting. Yeah, it's easy to. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it. Initially, I was like, what would Walmart want to do with TikTok? But now that I think about it a little bit more, it's like, you know, they could probably push their like, I think they're competing with Amazon on like their subscription model of like Prime and whatnot and push their products and things like that. And nope, no better way than like free advertising on a product on a platform you already partially own. Right. So there's a lot of things that Walmart could benefit from. I was thinking 
Amazon would be a good contender in probably purchasing a ByteDance's shares of TikTok. I think Amazon, I don't know them, but I think it would be, I think they would be interested in possibly exploring their like social media aspect of things. I mean, they already have their foot in a lot of sectors, but they don't really have one in social media yet. And that would be big. If Walmart was interested in, in purchasing TikTok, why would Amazon not be interested in that? It makes you wonder. It does. I don't know why they wouldn't. They yeah. already own a lot of things, like you were saying. They have their feet in a lot of different areas. They have Amazon Music, Amazon Prime. They have AWS services. Yeah. Oh, good. That's massive. That was a little redundant, but... Uh, Ring. They, I mean, they purchased Ring a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, they purchased recently. I don't know if it has fully gone through yet, but uh, um, iRobot. iRobot, yeah. Robotics, advanced robotics and whatnot. I mean, they... it. it it would be pretty good for them, I think, to add TikTok under their portfolio. But again, I'm I'm thinking that they're a little skeptical of making this purchase because, again, they don't want to be in the crosshairs. And they're not in there, not yet, not right now. And they don't want to get there. So it's, even though as good as it would be, they'd rather just get off, lay off, lay low, I guess. And, yeah, and re- maybe they have. Remain off the radar. Maybe Bezos has ties with China somehow. And if he were to buy it, there would be some kind of repercussions Ooh. or something. I don't know. There's Interesting. Of, yeah, yeah. Is Am- does Amazon sell products in China? I don't. I don't know. I don't. Dang, I don't want to. I don't want to speak. Or maybe he has not, mis- nothing. Mis- speak on yeah, this I episode. Know, but, but I don't believe Amazon uh, sells in China. Here, let, let's just do a quick Google, man. Yeah, go for it. I don't know. But you know what I just thought of? Tell me. First Republic Bank, right? They just got how much? Thirty billion, right? Yeah. You think they could just pony up ten, twenty more, and just and use just, and use their <laughs> and get out of the banking industry altogether? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just use that as like a huge driver for revenue. Well, I mean, you, they would use all their revenue to make the purchase. They have to. They'll stick to the social media game for a while. Well, no, because they'd still have their bank. What do you mean? Like they purchase TikTok, right? Yeah. And it's they, just they they need for, help. <laughs> well, yeah, they just got 30 billion in deposits from uh what? 11 banks? Yeah, 11 banks. Yeah. So <laughs> just use that deposit or that uh to acquire that, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> to acquire. yeah. I think then, I mean, it's probably better than the current business practice or exactly. business model yeah. they're in. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, TikTok isn't going insolvent as far as we know, right? Or isn't having any issues with that? Real quick, as I long j- as they have ties with the CCP, it ain't going under. Oh no, Amazon actually closed their business in China in 2019. Yeah, really. Yes. So, um, it's yeah. I, I remember. Um, China uses like Alibaba and things like oh, that. Oh yeah. So AliExpress. And yeah. Or whatever. WeChat, WePay, yeah. whatever. So a lot of these things again, and Alibaba is like, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, is is, it, is Alibaba Chinese? But it goes back to this notion of like the CCP wanting any major company that does co- business there for the most part is CCP controlled to some extent. Case in point, Amazon, even then themselves kind of got out of there. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of reasons as to why they decided not to. Even if business was good, maybe it was best to just get out of it. I don't know. I'm not, I don't, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't have that type of insight. To do with it. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, man, I should buy some Amazon shares. Just because of that alone? Just, yeah, yeah. Just because of that alone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's go back to First Republic Bank. You mentioned them and how they got $30 billion <laughs> from yeah. 11 banks. Yeah. let's. We have the list of banks that are, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden holding hands with one another. Um, three tiers. Yeah, three tiers, if you will. Um, it's interesting to see how all these banks are all of a sudden getting along. You know, it's... Usually in bed, together. in bed together, like I mentioned. Yeah, usually these are competitors that would like nothing more than to see the other one fail or, or get acquired by them, you know? Kind of like China with America, huh? Exactly. You want to see them just sink. Um, pretty, exactly. So let's uh, let's start off with the first wave of donors. These are the, what, S tier, the, the, the top donors, which, <laughs> which should include JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. All of these donated five billion a pop mm-hmm. to First Republic Bank. Talk about the second wave. Second wave were two point five billion. You got Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Yeah, and then the last one being uh, Truist, 
PNC, US Bank Corp, State Street, and Bank of New York Mellon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, they each donated $1 billion. Mm-hmm. I even saw somewhere, I don't know how, how accurate this was, I think SVB wanted to donate, but could not in light of recent events. No, no further comment was oh, provided. Oh, yeah, they didn't. But, um, they didn't. Uh, reach back out to us for, for yeah, confirmation. It, it, yeah, we emailed them and I, no, no one's no one's replying back yeah. or something like that. I think the email bounced, didn't it? Oh yeah, it did. It did like a no domain or something. <laughs> no do- like, yeah, yeah. like error or something <laughs> like that. Like recheck who I'm sending it to. Yeah, I think something weird happened there. But isn't it interesting, dude, to see all these banks helping one another out? It's very interesting. Like obviously in a in a society where you want to make the most money and you want to have, you know, the biggest, the biggest moat. You want your competitor to, to fall and, and you want to take over, right? I wonder if these banks have some kind of investments or like they've already loaned money and they don't want to lose it. There's got to be something there where, you know, it's clearly in their best interest to try to prop them up for a while. Maybe they're just trying to get their money out and then once that happens... They'd be okay with them letting letting them, uh, you know, sink. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure. We we tried looking up exactly as to why these banks, especially the ones donating five billion. I'm, and I'm saying donating. I don't I don't know if I'm if that's the correct term to use. I don't know if they want that money back at some point or how or how what whatever. The yeah, is, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we don't know the details of that agreement just yet. But I, mm-hmm. for the sake of this discussion, I'm gonna say donate. What is forcing? I'm not gonna say forcing. What is what is making these comp- these banks give First Republic Bank five billion each? We couldn't find a direct answer to that. Like, is it do they own a majority? Like, do they own some shares of First Republic Bank? What is it? When we can't do a quick search on the internet and we can't figure it out, it leads us to do nothing else but to speculate. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to do. That's right. <laughs> I believe. It's always fun. Exactly. I believe that there's um, there's some sort of deal, some, some something going on on the back door of things. And I, it's in their best interest to not let them sink. Again, these are competitors. These aren't all, oh, these are all like under the same umbrella of company. And uh, we all, you know, you, if you open it up, you can go to any bank and sign up there and you can get any credit card. It's the same deal. You know, we're all friends here. Not at all. These these banks are under normal conditions after each other's throats. But now all of a sudden, you know, they're all shaking hands, playing golf together and donating to one another. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb go and say, uh, first Republic just won a huge hand in a game of poker. What do you mean? They said, Hey, if we win, you guys got to donate X, X, why <laughs> amount of money and say we're failing and, or and something like that yeah it, it, probably it, I, yeah no not say they're they are failing and they just said okay if oh we i lose, see we you give are, you all our assets yeah, exactly if i win yeah you each have to you exactly know. yeah like we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll divvy up the company <laughs> and you guys right. can all each buy something oh i see what you're saying yeah that's interesting yeah but there's no way like there there has to be something tying all of these groups mm-hmm. back to that bank. And I would argue the ones that donate, donated the most have the most to lose. That's, That's why I'm they saying. donated $5 billion. Yep. There, There's If I'm Goldman Sachs and it's the, and you know, I have JP Morgan, Bank of America calling me or we're all playing, a, 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 you know, we're on Mar-a-Lago playing golf and enjoying some steaks, some gold-covered steaks. Now you're at the Dorcia. The Dorcia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dorcia, yeah. We, we're all, we finally got reservations That's at right. Dorcia. Yeah. Um, and they're arguing, hey, man, you need to donate $5 billion. Like, well, you need to donate $5 billion. I need to donate two point five, and I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. There's a reason for it. And there's a reason why these other ones that are only donating $1 billion, I would argue they have less to lose compared to these other ones. Yeah. I wonder what it is. But $1 billion worth, apparently. Yeah. It's, it's a zero-sum game. Exactly. And it, And, I mean, conspiracy theories aside, at the end of the day... <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, if if First Republic Bank does fail and goes insolvent and kind of repeats the the same uh, blueprint of SVB, um, <laughs> yeah. it hurts all of them because they are also banks, mm-hmm. and it would also uh, their customers would also grow skeptical of them and create some sort of ripple effect. Maybe they did some analysis on that. Maybe I'm they sure. ran they ran some kind of simulation where 
federal goes down. They have these ties. You mean First Republic goes down? Sorry. First Republic yeah. goes down. They have these ties. They ran the simulation. Some domino some, effect. Some domino effect that's going to lead to maybe them uh, having problems down the line. Losing too. money. Losing money. Exactly. What I Or more bank runs or something. You yeah. Know? Panic, so. mass hysteria, mm-hmm. like we talked about previously. Yeah. One thing that I did want to talk about, though, was um, ha- isn't it interesting that while a lot of these banks are coming to the rescue of First Republic Bank, why didn't they come to SVB's rescue? Why is it that the FDIC... You know, Uncle Sam needs to come to SVB's rescue, but in this this new information of First Republic Bank possibly, you know, going under as well, it's the banks now kind of helping them stay afloat. I don't know. More Why sp- not wait? Why not wait? Again, they're competitors, right? We like to th- mm-hmm. at least what we're led to believe is that they're c- competitors with one another. Why not let them sink and wait for the Uncle Sam to do the same thing they did with SVB? Yeah, my initial thought is. My understanding is SVB was highly tied to startups. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe these banks really had no money parked there. They didn't have any, you know, any ties to SVB. Maybe they have ties to, um, what is it? First First Republic Bank. First Republic Bank. I know, I mean, when we looked it up, we know that at some point, I can't remember the exact date. I want to say 2010. I could be wrong. Uh, First Republic Bank was acquired by Merrill Lynch. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact date. And then at some point, Merrill Lynch was acquired by Bank of America, mm-hmm. which owned Merrill Lynch. Excuse me, what did I? Oh, no. Yeah, Merrill Lynch was acquired by Bank of America. So therefore, it also owned First Republic Bank. And then some 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 years later, they, uh, Bank of America sold off First Republic Bank. And then um, they had they went public again and had some IPO. I, I want to say in sometime in the mid, mid the mid two thousand tens. So there are. I mean, when we say there are some ties, we don't necessarily mean like just business ties at a at a company level. But you you it's not hard to believe that there's personal connections and all these people know each other to some extent and. Maybe they're helping each other out on a more personal level. And it just so happens to be that because of like, you know, it's like if you and I, if I know you own a company and you know, you you reach out to me, hey, man, I'm not doing so hot. My company's not doing so good. Can you please help me out? Yeah, sure. I'll help you out. Even though we have nothing, it wouldn't necessarily make sense for our business to help one another out. But because of obviously I'm biased to you and the relationship we have, I'm willing to help you out. It could be some of that, too. Besides, also, but you know, on top of that, these banks are also connected to some level. If, like we said, the domino effect. If this bank fails, people start to get really concerned. Therefore, it's going to affect them as well. It could be both of those elements happening at the same time. Yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. I really have no idea. But you were saying that Bank of America had them and sold them off. Yeah. Maybe they have a significant amount of shares. Maybe they, I don't know. You know, maybe these banks have uh, money there. I don't know. Yeah. But I do agree. It could be also out of good faith. Maybe they know there's a rough patch and like they just need some help and they'll survive it. Yeah. It, it, it could possibly be a mixture of a few things, right? Not just one thing, but yeah. yeah. Nonetheless, though, it's it's interesting to like see this. Oh, for sure. Um, Knowing that the current state of banking is a little on edge, I'm not going to feed into that panic of mass hysteria, but yeah. a lot of people are just a little, you know, Raising an eyebrow, if mm-hmm. you will, at the very least, uh, at, the, at at a lot of banks here in the United States. What should these people do that have a lot of money in a, in a bank? And let's let's maybe add to it more than two hundred and fifty thousand in a in a single account with a single bank. Mm-hmm. That you know, any like we mentioned in our previous episode, anything that bleeds over that two hundred and fifty k limit isn't covered by the FDIC. What should these people be doing, or should they be worried, or? What should they, should they invest their money in something else? Well, I think we were looking earlier and uh, we figured we should look at gold and see how gold is doing since it generally tends to do well during uh, these kinds of moments in history. Yeah. Turns out, what was it? Over the last six months, it's up about 20%. Yeah, I think it was, uh, when we looked it up. Uh, or close to it. Right? It was 19 point something, right. but nonetheless, it's like, it has to do it. It has everything to do with like the current state of the economy, inflation, mm-hmm. and whatnot, and 
and interest rates and the uncertainty of where we're heading. The gold standard. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anytime the economy isn't doing so hot and the question of if banks are doing good or not, at least from what I remember, uh, gold is usually usually is a safe bet. And case in point, it sure is right now. Sure so, is, yeah. It's not a fiat, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it is it is something to consider, right? And you always want to diversify your portfolio. Mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily mean just like legitimate investments or like in, in companies. You also want to o- own some tangible assets too, right? Or like, you know, owning some gold, buying some gold. Silver, um, maybe. We didn't look into silver. We did but... not look into silver. But I'm sure it, I'm sure it's got to be pretty close to it as well some you know the same effect right when when cash isn't doing so hot precious metals go up that's mm-hmm. usually the the consensus right so i'm sure it's up there as well yeah um one thing that we did kind of want to mention though and was how let's say you you have a portfolio some sort of investment account you know irrelevant if it's a retirement account or not let's just say it's play money you can have zero banks in it you have nothing invested in banks yet if banks start to fail, the ripple effect that it would cause to other companies and the economy on, on the grand scheme of things would still affect your portfolio. Oh, of course, because most companies have debt, a balance sheet with debt on it. They're getting that debt from some bank some somewhere. They have that uh, that balance that they owe. You know, that bank, something's going wrong with it. Something's going to happen with you know, they're tied to that company and their debt balance sheet. Maybe their interest is going to go up. It's going to be harder for them to, to borrow or something's going to happen where, you know, some company who you think is not tied to it, tied to the banks for sure, like, you know, their their price is going to be affected by whatever's happening with the banks. Absolutely. Dude, forget debt. It, it just goes back to like, I have my funds in part at your home if you don't have it who does because i certainly don't have it if i can't have my money and you say you don't have the money either and we'll just we're all just shrugging shoulders that's a problem irrelevant of like debt and what you know what's going to happen and whatnot it's scary so it's like i can see why people that legitimately like in this case svb and first republic bank have a lot had or have a lot of assets in there it's like, dude, you're failing at your one thing to do. This, you're, you know, it's like, it's almost like McDonald's not selling hamburgers or cheeseburgers, whatever. Like, you know, it's kind of the same thing, dude. Pete, you are a bank. How do you not have the funds? Like, I gave you my money. Where's my money? Mm-hmm. So when those things happen, it's like, you you tend to, you know, you tend to distrust a lot of banks. And but like we mentioned earlier, even if you don't have anything invested in banking, like in the banking industry or sector, it's going to affect your portfolio. That's why it's best to have a diverse portfolio with several of several assets, I guess, or different different options. So if one thing goes down, it doesn't completely tank your portfolio. Right. Yeah. You brought an excellent point about the cash on hand, basically. Yeah. That's how I think we left it out the detail of that with uh, SVB, but I think that was the first domino effect, right? Uh, All of these startups needing cash, so they have their cash SVB. They're pulling it out for whatever reason. They're going to reinvest it in their own company somehow or whatever, and too many companies do it. Word gets out. They don't have enough cash to pay them all out. Yeah. Things go, the panic things ensues. Go south. Yeah. Now you have you know key figures saying, "Hey, something smells fishy. Go and withdraw your money while you still mm-hmm. can," which is sound advice to some extent, but it adds fuel to the fire. Yeah. And unfortunately, when that happens and there isn't a, a break or some sort of stopping point, you end up with SVB. Yeah. Right. Um, so I mean, other than other than that, I mean. I would still recommend people have some some money in high yield savings accounts or high yield checking accounts uh, with very you know big banks too, uh, like J P Morgan. They clearly have enough what, where they yeah. can donate. One of the banks that bank. donated five billion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or you know <laughs> some other bank like of that of that magnitude. I still have some with Cap One. Um, I looked into. Uh, how they get their 
a lot of their money for like paying out investments and things like that. And it was pretty much spot on. A lot of it's from their loans that they're giving out and credit and interest that they charge. Oh, yeah. the, the predatory lender, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, no, not Wells Fargo. Ooh, a good one. On the grand scheme of things, though, banking is still relatively – it's a safe thing to do. Oh, yeah. We're not <laughs> – none of this is advice, but we're not saying you need to go run to your bank, pull out all the ponies, and hide it under your bed or whatever, or do or buy all the gold you can, right? Or go, you know, go to your local <laughs> pawn shop and start buying all the, all the jewelry. No, no, no. But – just be aware. Ex- be of, aware of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Be skeptical. Question it. Earlier, you mentioned, you know, look into setting up some of those high yield like savings accounts with a bank. Again, all this is because of the banks. Like, what bank do you trust? Mm-hmm. Some of the bigger banks are safe to say are, are a little bit are a little more on the, on the greener side of things. But like we said in our previous episode, see what these banks are doing with their money and their investments. If you suspect or have reason to believe that, you know what, this is a sketchy investment practice, it's too bullish, it's too bearish, whatever the case is, go elsewhere. There has to be some bank at some level, big or small, that you're okay with. There's so many out there. Dude, park your money in a credit union. I don't know. See what they're doing. I mean, they may not be as transparent because they're not as big, they're not public, whatever the case is. But if you have a good relationship and you know something that other people don't, well, there you go. More power to you, you know? Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that. Yeah. While we look for banks that want to donate $30 billion to us. Go delete TikTok and buy a golden-plated tomahawk steak. <laughs>